Good morning. Today is today. Today is today. Yeah, today is day. So today is day 13, which is love bites bear. If a house is divided against itself, that house will not be able to stand. Mark 325. Like it or not, conflict in marriage is simply inevitable, not avoidable. When you tr tie the knot, when you tie the knot as bride and groom, you join not only your hopes and dreams, but also your hurts, fears, imperfections, and emotional baggage. From the moment you unpack from your honeymoon, you begin the real process of unpacking one another unpleasantly, discovering how sinful and selfish each of you can be, could be. Pretty soon your mates start to slip off your lofty pedestal and you off of theirs. The forced closeness of marriage begins stripping away your pu public facades, closing your private problems and secret habits. Welcome to fallen humanity. At the same time, the start of life begin testing or feeling what you're really made of. Work demands, health issues, in-law arguments, and financial needs flared up in varying degrees, adding pressure and heat to the relationship. This sets the stage for disagreements to break out between the two of you. You argue and fought, you hurt, you experience conflict, but you are not alone. Every couple goes through it. It's par for the course. But not every couple survives it. So don't think living out today there will drive all conflict from your marriage. Instead, this is about dealing with conflict in such a way that you can come out healthier on the other side, both of you together. The deepest, most heartbreaking damage you'll ever do or ever have done to your marriage will most likely occur in the thick of conflict. That's because this is when your pride is strongest. Strongest, Your anger is hottest. You're the most selfish and judgmental. Your words contain the most venom. You make the worst decisions. A great marriage on, on Monday can start driving off the cliff on Tuesday if unbridled. Brutaled. Conflict takes over and neither of you has your foot on the brakes. But love steps in and changes things. Love reminds you that your marriage is too valuable to allow it to be self-destruct to self-destruct and that your love for your spouse is more important than whatever you're fighting about love helps you install an airbag and set up guardrails in your relationship it reminds you that conflict can actually be turned around for good married couples who learn to work through conflict tend to be closer and more trusting more intimate and enjoy a much deeper connection afterwards but how the wisest way to learn to fight clean by establishing healthy rules of engagement. We don't have guidelines for how you'll approach a hot topic. You won't stay in bounds when the action heats up. Basically, there are two types of boundaries for dealing with conflict. We boundaries and me boundaries. We boundaries are rules you both agree on beforehand. Rules and that apply during any fire or allocation and each of you has the right to gently but directly enforce them. If these rules are violated, these could include we will never mention divorce, we will not bring up old unrelated items from the past, we will not never fight in public or in front of our children, we will call a timeout in public escalates to a damaging level, we will never touch one another in a harmful way, we will never go to bed angry with one another, Failure is not an option. Whatever it takes, we will work it. We'll work this out. I'm gonna pause it for a second. Uh, so this we boundaries, uh, this is something that's a big deal to me, and um, I've talked about all these actually with Tanya. Like I told her that um, like friends, family is not an option. Whatever it takes, we will work this out. Um, public fighting, public. That's something that she just asked me this yesterday. Like she asked me like, what's something you don't like me doing in public? And I was like. Uh, fighting, uh, freaking out, running away, stuff like that. Um, other boundaries I've mentioned, like, we will never mention divorce. Because, like, for me, I'm an absolute. And when I have an absolute do not cross this boundary, I expect it fully. And I will not cross it either. Um, we will not bring up old, unrelated items from the past. That's something, I'll, I'll just be honest, that I'm not, I'm working on. 
I still talk about stuff from my past, not with, uh, with not mine and Tanya's past, really, not much, but, like, that's something I want to aim for. Um, we'll never go to bed angry with one another. That's a big deal to me. Um, that's part of the reason why, before I ever go home for the night, I make sure her and I are on good terms and that she's okay. Um, I am working on the, the timeout, well, for a timeout, but as played at every level, I'm working on that with her actually um, yeah and then now we'll continue reading um, me boundaries are rules you personally practice on your own here are some of the most effective examples I will listen for before speaking everyone must be quick to hear slow to speak slow to anger James 1 9 I will deal with my own issues up front why do you look at the speck that is on your brother's eye but do not notice the log that is on in your own eye Matthew 7 3 I will speak gently and keep my voice down. A gentle answer turns away wrath, but a harsh word stirs up anger. Proverbs 15, 1. Fighting fair means changing your weapons. Disagreeing with dignity it should result in building a bridge instead of burning one down. Remember, love is not a fight, but it is always worth fighting for. Today's Dare. Talk with your spouse about establishing healthy rules of engagement. If your mate is not ready for this, then write out your own personal rules to fight. By resolve to abide by them when the next disagreement occurs. Check here when you call them today's dare. If your sparse spouse participated with you, what was their response? What rules did you write for yourself? As I said, we're always working on this as it is. We actually have been getting in this week specifically it's been really rough for us. We've been fighting and not like we've been fighting. But not like fighting like in the way where like we're screaming at each other and screaming matches and you know, telling the other that they're retarded and you know, not those type of fights. It's more like we're having a hard time just with agreeing on certain things and I'm having a hard time reciprocating. And she's having a hard time reciprocating. And so there's a lot of times where we have to stop for a second, breathe, come back to the subject, and continue talking about it later. Um, we have both accepted that this was going to come eventually for both of us. Um, you can't just have a happy relationship forever. So us fighting these battles now will help us battle these battles better in the future. Um, that's part of the reason why as I am battling, you know, the fighting a good fight basically with Tanya, for our relationship, but also for my friendships with certain people, I am love. I'm reading out loud and recording the love dare because I, I want to learn how to love better. And so far, it seems like I'm doing pretty good. For someone that loves unconditionally, <laughs> um, but even I still have room to work. And one of the things I need to work on for sure that's loud and clear in this book is this right here: learning how to fight fair and how to um, do it in a way that's healthy. I cannot tell you how many times I've had fights with friends and it's not ended healthy because they text me online um, because they refuse to just call and talk like adults and just sit sit down. Some of my friends I have fights with, they're way out of the state. They're not going to come back for a long, long time. And I have asked them multiple times, hey, if we have a problem, please call me. I'd rather talk about this and resolve this through a call instead of text. Because every text, it's my friend Julia, she's right. She's noticed a pattern that almost every major issue I've had has been over money. Some sort of money. And it's always small amounts. That's the stupid thing. And, you know, she wants to say that it's my fault. And I had to talk about, I'm like, uh, no, all these people that have left my life, they have chosen to destroy the friendship on their terms because I'm not willing to bend and just give them money that I don't have. I literally am not spending my money on anything right now. Partially because I have no money. But when I do have money, I'm not going to be spending on anything except for paying for what I need. Rent, food, and, and so forth. Tanya literally is managing my money at this point. Helping me save my money. I need a new car. I need to have a new car before winter sets. Because I'm going to keep real with you. I have zero interest in, uh, walking or biking during the winter 
while Tony's working another job. Not happening. So that's why I'm saving up to get myself another car. Unless God blesses me with another car. Which I need a car. Um, I think that's it for this love there. I'm going to get going. Uh, thank you for watching.